Today I'm going to be watching this video it's called What Does America Do Better in Britain? And as I mentioned on some previous videos, I've been watching a lot of comparison videos between America and my home country, the UK. And I think it's just a good way to learn about America, see what America does well. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing this one as well. So, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot America does better than Britain. So tell me what you think America does better than Britain. Let's find out in this video. America does better than the UK. We're going to find out right here on today's episode of the vlog. That's okay. Coming right up. I never knew he was Scottish, so good to hear another Scottish accent or Scottish person. Let's see what he's got to say. Hello everybody, how are you doing? And welcome to today's episode of the vlog. Today was a really awesome day. I was out in Edinburgh, right here where I live, and I met somebody who watches the vlog who was from Portland in Oregon. Shout out to Stan. Stan was over here enjoying Edinburgh. He watches my channel, watches the videos, and has come here based on a lot of my recommendations. And I'm just so happy to meet as many people who watch my videos as possible. Whenever I'm in town, I've got some spare time, and I hear that one of you guys are here in town. It fills me with pride and joy, and I have to always do my best to come out and meet. Uh, and I'm so glad I did. I was out in Edinburgh today for two... Yeah, tell me if you've actually been to Scotland, or tell me if you've been to the UK, England, Wales, Northern Ireland. What did you think about it? What was good about it? Was there anything you didn't like about Three it? Three and a half hours. I was speaking to the guys all about Scotland, all about the UK in general. We were speaking all about life in America, the United States of America. And it was just such a really interesting, fascinating discussion and cultural exchange. I really enjoyed it. And he also gave me this awesome t-shirt all the way from Portland and Oregon. Shout out to Portland, Oregon. I will definitely try my best to be there at some point in my plans to travel to America, right? This cultural exchange continues right here on my channel and it's been so fascinating to do. As a lot of you guys know, I did a tour with the United States Embassy two years ago, the Exploring American Values Tour, where they took a bunch of British vloggers around America to discover things that we might not necessarily have known about. But anyway guys, let's get to it. My name is Sean, welcome to everybody. Thank you so much for joining in with my videos. I'm a vlogger from Edinburgh in Scotland. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget, right now, hit the red subscribe button in the bottom corner and then you will be part of this family from here on in. Why wouldn't you wanna do that, right? Have you done it? Go subscribe to his channel. Have. So, today's episode, I'm talking about some of the things that you guys do a lot better in the United States of America than we do here in the UK. And actually there's loads of things, loads and loads and loads, but it kind of spurred on from this conversation I had with Stan today in Edinburgh. Stan from Portland, Oregon. We talked a lot about our lifestyles in different places and I was kind of making notes mentally and I've come home and I've made some proper notes uh, and jotted them down on my phone and I'm gonna be going through some of them to really discuss some of the things I think you guys in the United States just do so much better than us. I mean, this might sound like a frivolous list, right? But I think it's also important. And you know what? People in the UK in general, British people, can be a bit snooty and snobby about stuff in general, right? And I'm doing these videos to put that right because it's not correct. And I think it's just fun to discuss these things, right? And obviously, I would love to know your opinions to a lot of these things down below in the comments as we go along, okay? And to stop this video just dragging on for hours and hours and hours like it could potentially do, I've whittled it down to just 12 right now for this video's purpose, okay? Number one, in the United States of America, you guys make many, a great many better television productions than we do here. And I'm talking specifically about television dramas, right? The series that you guys produce, the natural home of Netflix and all the different streaming services of late and I have to think about some of the amazing ones I've watched. Most of my favorite TV series are from the United States of America. And I know what you guys are gonna say, right? Because I've heard, and I don't know how true this is, you can correct me, is that a lot of people from America watch a lot of British television programs. Am I right? Is that true? Well, let me tell you my upbringing. I'll talk about some of the more recent programs in a second, but if I look way, way back, even when I was young, most of the television programs I loved growing up were American. Uh, let me think about it. Keenan and Kel, I don't know if any of you guys will remember that. Sabrina the Teenage Witch, <laughs> Saved by the Bell. Those yeah, are some man. of my kind of early teenage shows I used to watch. Growing up more, I used to love Friends. Friends was an institution for me, what a program that was. And if I think even re more recent, Two and a Half Men, The Big Bang Theory, like the comedy sitcom type of shows you guys have have just been genius. But then, really recently, on the streaming services, Breaking Bad, that was just so phenomenal. Love mm. that show. And all the other shows I watch right now are just so, so good. And then I have a think about a show 
that portrays Scotland and Scottish life, albeit from a time that was long since gone. Outlander. Outlander, Outlander yeah. as much as it is portraying Scotland and has a largely Scottish cast, it was put together by Americans and also the original author, Diana Gabaldon, is American as well. What a great program that has been for Scotland. But then let's not forget cartoons, all right? You guys in America are the kings of cartoons. The Simpsons will just forever be known as the best, greatest cartoon ever to be shown on television, right? You guys do television way better, I think, in America than we do here, and that's universally agreed. There can be no argument with that. And guys, listen, I'm going to be saving some of the better ones until the end. So yeah, so I, I kind of agree with that. American television, American movies, you can say, to like further, on, further expand on that, are just like the highest quality. That's what Hollywood is known for. That's what America in general is known for. Great television. Tell me if you agree with it. Tell me when you think the glory days of American television was it like the 90s, the 2000s? Do you think it's at the moment? What's your favourite show at the moment? I watch a lot of American TV, always have. I'm probably a similar age to this guy because the shows he mentioned are ones I relate to. Also things like Frasier, which I know just had a reboot. I loved Frasier back in the day as well. Uh, even on the animated shows, things like South Park, just so good, so much. It's like an unlimited amount, but I know there is a lot of shows that are not so good on Netflix as well, but... The good ones, things like, like the HBO shows, are always high quality. Tell me what's your favourite show ever. My, my favourite show ever is The Sopranos. I wish I could watch that from the beginning again. It was amazing. Uh, but great TV. These days I actually watch a lot of Scandinavian drama shows, like detective shows. They do a lot of great ones, like Sweden, Finland and all that. Uh, but American shows, brilliant. You're going to want to stick around until then. Number two, public holidays. Here's the thing, we have public holidays in the UK as well, probably just as many as you do, but I feel in America, from my experience, you guys turn your holidays into something really meaningful and special. Like and events. I know that is largely because you don't get that many holidays from work like we do here in the UK, right? You guys take your holidays so seriously and a lot of the times you remember the purposes of your holidays. I was at Memorial Day, for example. What a special and important day that was. Never ever forget that and you guys really really have a meaning for it. We here in the UK we have a lot of holidays and they were put in place because of something or other that happened in history but nobody really understands or cares. All they know is it's a day off. Thanksgiving, what a massive ceremony Thanksgiving is for you guys. We don't really have anything like that here in the UK and we're kind of amused and interested by it and I think it's really really special and you know what just keep going with that because I want to enjoy that lifestyle, that culture of important holidays as well and like kind of rituals that go around that so i absolutely love that about america number th yeah that is something i hadn't really considered we do have a lot of public holidays in the uk as well maybe not as much as america i don't know but people don't celebrate what it's actually about they just yeah as he said it's usually like they'll go out drinking the night before and it's usually a, a, a like a, an excuse to stay in bed hungover all day so I love that. And yeah, I want to know more about Thanksgiving as well. Of course, that, that's something I've really only heard about in TV shows and movies. I don't really know too much about it, but is it how important is it? Is it important as Christmas? Is it more important for some people? How do you celebrate Thanksgiving? Maybe I'll like make a reaction to a video about that as well. Three, dry fruits. <coughs> this, as I say, a lot of these things are quite frivolous, but also it's interesting and important at the same time because a lot of your culture in terms of like food and the way you do things ends up coming over here, albeit delayed, right? So drive through is obviously something that has existed in America for many, many years, eventually made it over to the UK and we have them as well now, but you guys have so many more options of drive throughs different styles and different things. You can even go to a bank drive through in the United States of America. Am I wrong? We don't have anything like that here, but dare say, because it goes into America first, we will get it at some point. It's just convenience, right? Convenience. Number four, nature. Not any nature though, because of course we've got a lot of nature as well, especially here in Scotland, but in America, you guys have some severe nature, nature that can quite literally kill you. You've got like bears. We don't have bears. You guys have mountain lions. Are they cougars, right? Cougars. Those things, like, they belong in a zoo. Like, yeah. the only way you'd see a cougar here in Scotland is in a zoo because, like, we just don't have anything like that. Sure enough, if you go back hundreds and hundreds of years, we did have dangerous animals here. We had wolves and we did have lynxes as well, which is a, a big cat, but 
nothing like what you guys have. You have literally, in a lot of the different states, from the north to the south, dangerous wild animals, spectacular wild animals. And if it's not the big giant ones you have to worry about, especially more towards the north in the forest and stuff, in the south towards the desert, you've got um, an array of animals that could put you down with one bite. And I know this because I watch all the nature programs. And in fact, one YouTuber here on this platform, Coyote Peterson, called Brave Wilderness, all about some of these animals, a Gila monster. Blooming heck, what on earth <laughs> is that thing doing in a place like United States of America? <laughs> that thing is lethal. But then you've got like rattlesnakes, you've got tarantulas, and you've got scorpions. Nature in America is badass, right? Seriously badass. And we just do not have anything like that in the UK. An important point. Me mm. being some... Yeah, I mean, especially comparing Scotland to America. Scotland is probably smaller than some national parks in America. Is absolutely insane, uh, the size of America, but obviously that translates to the diversity in wildlife, in nature as well. What's the most interesting animal that's only found in the USA, in your opinion? What's your favourite example of nature, wilderness, landscape, your favourite place in, a, in the USA? Someone that, somewhere that's very interesting to learn about. Somebody who loves nature, I would definitely say that is awesome, and I love that about the United States. Number five, I'm going to talk about homes and houses, right? Sure enough, this one is very debatable, okay? Because a lot of you guys will say that we have got awesome homes and houses because of, like, the castles. A lot of the places where we live are, like, hundreds of years old, right? And you can really trace back the heritage, and we've even got, like, haunted places you can live in. Okay, I know they are different, right? But also, if you have a really, really nice house here in the UK, like a big size, big garden, you're likely to find that they cost a lot of money, okay? And it's also very, very difficult, very rare to find anywhere here that would have a swimming pool. Of course, the weather plays a big part in that, right? But I just remember flying over the United States of America, even Canada as well, places that are much colder than here and just seeing like swimming pools, swimming pools, swimming pools for as far as you could see houses, big massive houses for literally hundreds of miles, people with swimming pools in their garden. And I just love that. I love water, I love having swimming pools and we just don't have them here. It's a bit of a trek and annoying to find a swimming pool here, a public one where there's like space for you to actually swim in, but a lot of you guys just have them in your house. Florida, right? It's almost as though like less people in Florida don't have a pool than do. And like you'll find that your houses in the United States of America Big houses are a lot cheaper than they are here for a similar sized house. Numbers. Yeah, I've seen things like that mentioned on previous videos before. With regards to the size of the houses, it's definitely, I think in general, it's known that American houses are bigger. Again, it depends on the location. Of course, in the big cities, in central areas, in big cities, the properties are going to be a lot more expensive, probably more similar to somewhere like London. But in the other towns and cities and states, uh, the more desolate areas, you could probably buy big properties for cheaper. But are swimming pools that common? Do you have a swimming pool in your home? Is that only certain states? I guess it's probably the ones with warmer climates. But he did say colder places too. Uh, again, it's something you see on movies and TV shows, but I didn't really realise they were that prevalent. Uh, but is that the case in your experience? Six, technology companies. This might sound a little bit odd, right? And I know there's places around the world doing all kinds of crazy stuff with technology right now, but United States of America has launched some iconic technology and I have been a big fan and it's played a big role in my life right here on this platform, YouTube slash Google. Like this just made my life so much better thanks to this platform. But if you think about all the other social media platforms that we use, most of them were launched, started, and were born in the United States of America. Thanks to the, the unlimitless talent that you guys have for these types of stuff, you just launch all the best technology companies. Why is that? And you've ended up exporting that technology around the world, right? All the technology that I use, basically, even things like the phone, the hardware, is made in the United States of America, designed in America, right? So, yeah, I am a big fan of American technology in general. The next... Yeah, I, I agree with that as well. Like, America is so far ahead of any other country, especially Britain. When you think Britain, although it's a much smaller country, but we have some great educational 
uh, facilities, universities. We have a lot of smart people, but for some reason we don't really have that tech, uh, tech in that success with tech companies. Definitely nowhere near the USA, and not even just these tech companies like social media platforms, places like Amazon, how they've developed into this like unbelievable like company not just doing like deliveries of products, but like, there are focus on AI, things like Tesla, how they're at the forefront of ele electronic, uh, like electric cars and again AI. Uh, open AI themselves, I mean, like that's the future. Uh, in, it's in another American company. So America just has this amazing talent for producing these very forward thinking, successful tech companies. Something I, I'm a fan of these sort of things as well. So I wish Britain had more of that culture. I work in a tech company. So I wish Britain had that culture, but they just don't for some reason. America, yeah, just so far ahead of everybody else. The thing on my list is sporting events. Now I know like a lot of these things are pretty subjective, right? Because we have big sporting events here, especially when it comes to do with football or soccer, as you know, right? But I just feel like every single game in the United States of America, everyone I've been to has been like this big family event. I don't know if you've seen on my channel already a video where I went to my first ever American football game. I'll put the link up above somewhere. I went to my first ever football game in New York. We watched the Giants play the Detroit Frogs. That's an inside joke. You'll need to watch that video to see what I mean by that, right? But for me, it was fascinating just to arrive at the stadium and see all the people doing their, their car boot thing, what do you call it? Tailgating. Tailgating man, and yeah. my biggest regret from that day, from that whole trip to New York, is that I did not involve myself with all the people doing tailgating because it looked so much fun and everybody was friendly and I was a little bit nervous and shy like, look at this big thing, event, I'm going to American football, I just want to get on my seat. And really we could have got heavily involved in that. So that was special. But then inside the stadium, like the whole national anthem thing, and then the fireworks. And this wasn't any important game, right? It was just an average league game, I believe. And it was just such a big event. So like, I love that about the United States of America. So enthusiastic and energetic when it comes to sport and events. Every single one, number mm. eight. And I don't think it's even just about the enthusiasm and how much they enjoy the match. It's like the whole match day experience, game day experience, the stadiums are so modern, the food selections, just everything going on around the stadiums are a lot more vibrant than a lot of British sports. Like some of the, the bigger teams in England with the, the new stadiums can replicate the experience to an extent, but America again is so much better, not just with the whole day like in outside the stadium, but inside the stadium during the match and things like that as well. Uh, but yeah, with regards to tailgating, like say somebody like me, I'd probably be nervous to take part in that as well, just go up and talk to people. But like if somebody like was a tourist that just went to like a sporting event, do you think they can just get involved in tailgating so easy? What do you do? Like how would you like get in and get involved in that sort of thing? It, and now we're talking about barbecues. And I've done mm. a video very recently on my channel discussing barbecues, some of the barbecues that I've been to in the United States of America. You guys just do barbecue so much better than we do. Go and check that video, by the way, after you've watched this as well. As I say, all the links are gonna be up here somewhere. Barbecues in America are just like, there's no comparison. We are shameful in the United Kingdom when it comes to doing barbecues. We just don't know how to do them properly. I have learned, because I've went to USA, because I've been in Brazil quite a lot as well, I know how to do a good barbecue. You know what we do here in the United Kingdom and call it a barbecue, and I know a lot of people will be offended by this, literally offended. Our barbecues are going to the supermarket and buying some hamburgers and some sausages, usually frozen, bringing them home and putting them on a barbecue and then putting them on some bread. And that is what we call a barbecue, right? But it's not a barbecue. That is not what you call a barbecue. I think you guys call that cooking out. That's literally what we call a barbecue. You guys do barbecues seriously and properly and I admire that. Number nine. Being yeah, that, that one as well. I can't like agree anymore with that. It's so true. Like what we do is so pathetic in the UK. Like really a couple of little sausages, burgers, flip it here and there. I mean, you'll probably be disgusted with the lack of flavor in British barbecue. But when you see these videos of American barbecue, Texas barbecue, it's almost like a different planet, man. It's so, so good. It looks amazing. I actually found a couple of places here in Malaysia that sell American barbecue, American barbecue, Texas barbecue. Do you think I should make a video trying them so you can see what they're like? 
it may be embarrassing, it might be funny. Maybe you let me know if you want to see that. I might go and make a video. Outgoing and fun. Wow. Like, again, subjective. And I know we've got some really good people, especially here in Scotland, okay? But when I was traveling for the United States and America, one of the big takeaways for me was people being just so outgoing all the time and fun and friendly. I, have, I had such a really great time with that because people would always just, just come up to you and tell you some crazy stories and welcome you. And I just felt really good and warm about everything. So a definite big point about the United mm -hmm. States of America that I love is just people being outgoing, absolutely. And that's people from across political divides, people from different cultures and backgrounds and, and places, states, cities. I met people from a lot of different places and generally speaking, they were all pretty much the same. Number 10, right? Some people will think this is a good thing, others will think it's bad, but I think it's generally interesting, okay? Junk food, because you have such a massive, massive variety of junk foods in the United States of America. And again, it's relevant, right? You might think this is frivolous, but it's actually relevant because a lot of that stuff does make its way over to us eventually. You guys have it first for years and years and years, and then it gets exported and then we take it. And like I mentioned on this video, or on these videos a few months ago, we started to get things like Five Guys, Shake Shack, and even Taco Bell now you can find in the UK. So we do import a lot of that stuff eventually. So whatever you guys have there, basically it's interesting for me to see because we'll eventually get it here as well. And I'm really trying to think of a British um, fast food chain that I would say is better than the ones that you have in the United States There's of America, none. and I can't really think of one. So there you go. Number 11. Yeah, that's so true as well. Uh, Again, they've op just opened Taco Bell here in Malaysia. Do you think I should make a video, go and try that as well, so you can see what Taco Bell is like in Asia? Again, but, I mean, it just shows you really America does so much better, man. When it comes to fast food, snacks, all that, definitely, right? the, f the American versions are so much better than the... I mean, Brit as I say, Britain doesn't even have any of its own fast food. And this one is a little bit controversial, okay? Right? Very controversial, but I think an important one to discuss. Cannabis. We all know many of your states have legalized cannabis use. Now, while I'm not a user myself, I think it's important because, like, they know it helps out with several medical conditions and up until very recently, it doesn't matter what kind of medical conditions you have, you could not get it legally here in the UK. We have been very, very slow on that type of stuff. Now, I know there's lots of discussions and debate on this issue. And like I said, it's not something for me to really decide because I've not got skin in the game, literally. But there is so much evidence that it does help with certain conditions. And listen, let's just be real about something. Alcohol, if we're going to talk about bad effects of certain substances, alcohol does so much damage and has done mm. so much damage for hundreds and hundreds of Especially years. Especially to Scotland as I really well. think it's odd to persecute cannabis in a much greater way. So you guys have been far more progressive in that front than we have. And it'll be interesting to see if we catch up. There has been a lot of talk in our parliament about how we make the legislation very similar to what a lot of your states have. So yeah, you're a lot faster on these types of things than we are. Here's a yeah, I 100% agree with that. When I was at school, high school, when I was about 13 or 14, I had to do a project and one of them was for legalization of cannabis. There's a lot of benefits to it, definitely to the economy, to the people, and when you compare it to alcohol, especially being from a country like Scotland who have such a bad relationship with alcohol, we treat it very badly. There's a lot of alcoholism, a lot of problems related to that. Cannabis is so much, it's the opposite. I have dabbled, of course, like throughout my life. I still do uh, now and again, but I mean, I live in Asia now, so Recently, Thailand has just legalized it, so I, I went uh, last year. It was so easy to get, you go there, it's such a chill environment, it's the same, I've been to Am Amsterdam, it's very similar to Amsterdam as well. If people want to do it, people are going to do it, no matter whether it's legal or not, you may as well. it's not hard, it's harder to get addicted. I'm sure pro people have got bad experiences of it as well, the same as anything that you can be classed as a vice or something that's not great for you. but. It's not terrible, and I, I only see the benefits for it, and yeah, I hope that one day in the UK they can legalise it, and the thing is, I from so, something I read that Britain's actually one of the biggest exporters of uh, medical marijuana as well, so it's crazy that they don't want to sell it to people within the UK, but they're happy to export it and sell it outside the country. Yeah, tell me what you think about Last that. one, number 12, and I think this one's so important because it's really about the national psyche, okay? Optimism, this is the last thing I noted down, optimism. 
I just feel when I've been in the United States of America, there is a sense of optimism all around, whether it's in the big cities like New York or much smaller places or even states where it's more rural like Florida. I, I just felt optimism all the way around. And I know there's negative people everywhere, but I just feel here in the United Kingdom, we are more doer. There's a good Scottish word for you. We are doer about things. We're a bit more pessimistic. Definitely. A bit like doom and gloom about the world. Maybe it's the weather. I don't know what it is, but we are just more... <laughs> Do it about do things where in, in the United States of America, I just feel there's so much optimism about different things, whether it's business, whether it's about travel, the world in general. Like, there's just a lot of optimism flowing through the United States of America, and I so admire that, right? And I just wish here sometimes it was a bit more optimistic because I myself am an optimistic person, and I think optimism rubs off on other people. So, in the United States, where I just saw so many optimistic people, it was like a real feel good and I just felt I wanted to be a part of that. So that was my list, right? And like I've been saying, if you've been watching my videos, I am planning to put together some kind of like documentary type of trip to the United States. Yeah, so go subscribe to his channel. I'll leave the link to this video in the description. He seems like a good guy, very positive about USA and I appreciate that as well. With the regards to the points there about the optimism and also about the outgoing nature and friendly nature of Americans. That's what I really love. I've mentioned that on previous videos, something I really loved about learning about America is just the people and something I'm sure is very true. Do you think it's fair to say that for everybody? You said about everybody being optimistic and outgoing. I'm sure there's people who are more on the negative side and not as outgoing, but do you think this is a fair generalization? Again, as he mentioned, people in Scotland are more pessimistic and more dour, as he said, which is more like always looking for the negatives and things. We always think things can be better. We're not so optimistic. But again, I think it is down to the, the grey Scottish weather. But tell me what you think about this video. And if you agree, these are things America does better than Britain. Tell me if there's anything else you think America does better than Britain too. Thanks.